Uh, I just wanted to ask everybody, how many people here have used MongoDB before or have heard of it? How many people have never heard of it before to never use it? I'm just going to take one more minute just to let some people in and then we can get started. So I'm going to get started. Uh, so today our talk is about our, our project called Monary, uh, and it's really fast analysis with NumPy and MongoDB. Sorry, the size of the word. Um, so just for a second, uh, before we really get into it, so first, uh, kind of imagine, just take a second and just imagine uh, that maybe you're a data scientist. So if you're not a data scientist, maybe you're some other sort of scientist, a biologist. Or if you're none of those, maybe you use MongoDB. And if you don't fit any of the above, any of the above, well then you had to get here somewhere. So maybe you've taken a taxi uh, to get here. Um, and at the end of the day, you want to analyze some data. So for most people, when it comes when it when it's time to like crunch some numbers, uh, we kind of think of it as like vectors of like billions upon billions of numbers, whether integers, floating points. So Given a huge data set, let's just say, as a contrived example, you want to take the average ball. So we're using Python, so uh, we're very flexible on how we want to structure our data and what data structures we want to use. So for a second, imagine if your data is stored in a list of Python bits. Some of you might say, like, why don't you ever use this? I'll get to this in a second. So we ran a quick test uh, on our laptop there. If you keep your data in this format, you get about you get to average about 12 million numbers per second. Uh, it's not that bad, but for us, it's not fast enough. So if you use a regular Python list, uh, it's much better, actually. You get an order of magnitude faster processing. We have about 100 million numbers per second. Uh, but finally, uh, if you want to use a NumPy n-dimensional array, uh, this is the clear winner. It can crunch about 500 million numbers per second. And this scales really well um, to really big scales. So clearly, NumPy is uh, the heavy hitter when it comes to analyzing data. Uh, it has a lot of arrays and matrices, lots of functions, and we really like its n-dimensional array out there. So the question is, how do we get our data from our database into NumPy? And the answer is Monary. So before we go any further, uh, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Kyle. Hi, uh, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a rising senior at Rutgers University. Uh, and this is Matt. Uh, uh, <laughs> he is also a rising senior at Carleton College. Uh, together, we're both interns at MongoDB for the summer, uh, and a report contributes to our project called Layer. So, before I've been talking about MongoDB, so first, why even use MongoDB? Uh, if some of you have attended um, the talk earlier on proteomics and MongoDB, uh, you might know why. Uh, if you've never used for the few people here who have used it, it's, a, it's an open source document database. So basically all of your data, instead of in tables, is kept as a document. So it's a series of key value pairs where the value can be a number, a string, uh, an array, or even another document inside of your original document. So as you can see, it maps very well to a Python dictionary. Uh, besides this, um, MongoDB kind of scales well. So if you want to crunch billions on, on billions of, uh, of numerical data points, or you have terabytes of data to crunch, it works pretty well. But most importantly, uh, is that data is unpredictable in the real world. And MongoDB gives us flexible schemas, meaning that it can, get, it can accommodate varying data structures, and that not all documents in the same collection have to have the same field. So for example, if you have sensors taking time series data, and it malfunctions, something goes wrong, it like drops on the ground. Um, and you have data that's missing that's perfectly okay. And this happens to work very, very well with NumPy's master rates. 
So if you've never used NumPy's MA module before, uh, it's like a regular NumPy array with an added uh, with an added array as a bit mask, and the mask is turned on to signify that the data at this index uh, is invalid or is corrupted, which works well in the real world when you can't guarantee that all the data you're going to get is going to be pristine. So here's our picture right now. We have our data in MongoDB, and we clearly want to use NumPy over there. But the big question is, what happens in between? Uh, so there happens to be a official Python driver uh, for MongoDB called PyMongo. Uh, and if you want to use PyMongo, it's great. It kind of works like this. You have your data in MongoDB, and you make a connection to it using PyMongo. From there, it queries the database and loads all of the information to a Python dict. And then from there, you can take it straight into NumPy. Uh, this is the kind of workflow you have to use. And this is actually pretty fast. Uh, we've tried this. We have, we have scripts running on our laptop with the server on localhost. Uh, and you get about 150,000 document reads per second. It's pretty good. Uh, however, uh, everybody knows that object creation is the overhead for creating objects is pretty expensive. Um, and in this case, we know we want to use NumPy arrays, but the dicts used by PyMongo, while they're great for representing the data in MongoDB, they're only being used as intermediate storage vessels. So if we can cut, if we can simply get rid of the middleman and go straight into an array, can we get even faster? Uh, and obviously the answer is yes. So enter Moderi. Uh, this is our project that we've been working on over the summer. It's open source and it's been a bunch of fun. So basically, instead of this PyMongo workflow, the Monary workflow looks something like this. You have your data in MongoDB. You make a connection with Monary and it loads your data straight into NumPy. So it just simply removes the intermediate dict representation. It's a very simple optimization, but this is, and it, and it gets rid of this uh, this intermediate layer, and this is extremely fast. So previously, we said we had about 150,000 document reads per second. Using the same tests with Monary, we get 1.7 million uh, document reads per second. That's 10, about 10 times speed up and order of 19 faster. Uh, and this is amazingly fast. So I've been talking about what it can do, but what actually is it? So it's this bridge between MongoDB and NumPy that gives us really, really fast integration between the database and, and your tool for data processing. So it's originally written by a man named David Beach, who's not affiliated with MongoDB. Uh, and it supports a bunch of, it supports all of the CRUD operations on your database. Uh, it's, it has a very specific uh, set of capabilities. Uh, it's meant to be used for only really fast integration between NumPy and MongoDB. Uh, it depends, obviously, on NumPy for its storage. And it actually uses the MongoDB C driver in the back end. So for those of you who are kind of interested in uh, how your libraries kind of work, uh, how, what, what we did is it's implemented in the back end in C. So we use the MongoDB C driver as well as MongoDB's libvsong. And it makes a connection to MongoDB. It reads the data from the database. And it transfers uh, the data in vsong uh, onto the Python side, allocated some space uh, on disk. Then, with C types, you pass pointers to these arrays in C, and then we iterate over all of the documents uh, we, we've obtained from MongoDB and put them in an appropriate format that can be understood by NumPy. So you can do further data processing on your own uh, with all the power of NumPy. So I've been talking a lot about, talking a lot about Monary, uh, now I'm going to pass it over to my partner, Matt, uh, who will show you an in-depth explanation of how it actually works. All right. Um. Okay. Cool. So, uh, sorry about that brief transition. Um, but uh, as Kyle said, we've been working on Monary this summer, and uh, so um, all of the features you're about to see, uh, some of them have not yet been entirely released, but they're implemented and they are in the open source code repository. Uh, so you do have access to these if you want to check out the source. Um, but with that being said, uh, let's go over to our demo. Um, 
So what this is, is uh, an IPython notebook, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this tool. Um, and essentially what's happening is that all of the Python code that, that you'll see here is actually getting run um, on my laptop. We also have a MongoDB server uh, running locally on this laptop, and we've preloaded it with some data. Um, the data that we're using is New York City taxi trips of 2013. Um, this is data from MTA. And it's just a bunch of data about taxis. And um, we're using a subset. And so right now we have uh, 6 million records loaded. Um, cool. So let's get started with Monary. Uh, first, we create a connection. And that's as simple as from Monary, import Monary. And then you let your client equal to Monary. Um, you can also pass in a MongoDB URI. And this gives you uh, some connection string options, uh, as well as authentication. Um, and then to get your database, uh, all of our data is loaded into a database that we call taxi. Um, so right here, we'll just do database equals client.taxi. And there's our connection. Cool. So now that we're connected, let's go ahead and retrieve some data. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with MongoDB, this syntax for Monary is uh, kind of similar to the Mongo shell, except that uh, so what we're doing is we say database.trips, which is our connection or our collection, um, which is sort of like a, a SQL table. Um, but anyway, we're using the trips collection and we're finding all of the data that matches the empty query, uh, which is the dictionary. Um, from that, we'll be removing the key or we'll be accessing the key labeled distance, uh, and we'll be storing it as a float 64. So what's going to happen is Monary is going to access all the data. Uh, it's going to pre-allocate. Um, an array of float 64s, uh, and then distances will be a NumPy mask array. So from there, we can just simply take the mean. Um, and when we run this, we can see that the uh, average taxi trip in Manhattan in our data set was uh, 2.95 miles. Um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, how many were there that we just averaged right there? Um, well, we can use Monary to count, uh, and there are 3 million trips in that collection right there. Um, so I said that we pre-allocated this array. And with 3 million trips, that takes up kind of a lot of memory. Um, so you might be wondering, can we do this in fixed width blocks? Uh, and the answer is yes. <laughs> so with Monary, instead of doing a find, you can do a block find and specify block size. So right here, um, this database.trips.blockfind will return a Python generator. And so we can iterate over it using fixed block size of 10,000. Um, and with this, we can process uh, an unknown amount of memory with an unknown amount of data with only a fixed amount of memory. So this average will do the same computation. Uh, and we can see again that we get the same 2.95 miles. Cool. Um, but the really cool thing about this is that our data is already in NumPy. So we can go ahead and um, make some cool figures like a histogram. Um, what we're going to do here is use matplotlib. This is a, a Python tool. It does a lot of cool things, one of which is making plots and pretty figures. Uh, and so what we're going to use it for right now is to make a histogram. Um, what this line is doing is we're moving the masked values from our data uh, so it doesn't skew the histogram to the end. So the values that weren't present will be masked. Um, and so we'll just remove that to not skew it. Uh, and then we do plot that histogram. Um, and then some labels and some axes, and we can see the distribution of distances that cabs traveled in Manhattan. Uh, so all of this has been pretty cool so far, um, but we haven't done anything extremely intense computationally, uh, but we can do that using Monary because we can insert intermediate values back into new collections. Um, this one's going to be writing to disk, so I'm going to start it while I talk you guys through it. Um, so what's happening is uh, we do a block find again, and we iterate through our blocks. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at the tips, which is the amount that people in the cab tipped, and the total amount that they paid. Um, we're going to calculate the percentage uh, that they tipped, so like the percent tip they left when they exited the cab. Um, <coughs> and so that is all done with vector operations, because NumPy does this natively for us. Uh, and so then afterwards, we're going to insert the values into our database. Uh, this looks a lot like find, except that instead of a query, we specify a non-high mask array. Uh, we specify the key. So these will all be inserted into our collection uh, under the key tip and will be stored as float64. Um, and what it returns is a list of object IDs. 
uh, which is how MongoDB will index all of these values. Uh, and then to prove that it worked, I printed out the, uh, the number that Monary says we've inserted and also the total count of the database, uh, which you can see is 3 million. Um, cool. So now that we have this data inserted into a new collection, we can use this. Um, but before I do this calculation, uh, let me just ask, who, uh, I'm assuming a lot of you have taken a taxi before, uh, what, how much do you tip when you leave a tip? Uh, just anyone, shout it out. 20%. 20%. Alright, all right. so we're getting a lot of 20s, 20, 15. Alright, so uh, let's, let's take a look at our actual data. Um, only 11.2% average. Uh, so that was a little confusing to me when I saw that first. And I was like, okay, let's inspect that, let's plot this. Uh, so this is going to be exactly the same map plot lib that you saw before, except this time our histogram is going to be with the percent tips. Uh, and when we run this, <laughs> Our data is actually bimodal here, uh, so we're getting a lot of people who don't tip, uh, but out of the people who do tip, it's about 20%, which is what we expected. Um, so moving forward, MongoDB has this really cool thing called the aggregation framework, uh, which is you can bring computation to your data, and MongoDB will do computation for you before giving you the data back. Uh, and this is done in what MongoDB calls a series of pipelines. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to match every, uh, every taxi ride um, where they got picked up before 2013, January 2nd. So we're going to be looking at only data on New Year's of 2013, uh, just for fun. We're going to group all of the data by the time it was picked up, and we're going to sum these all uh, at the pickup time. So we'll see like, for every second how many pickups occurred in that second. Um, finally, we're going to sort them by the time it was taken, and then db.fairs.aggregate, which is almost exactly like find, except instead of a query, we specify a pipeline, and that's the only difference. Um, oh, I, I also need to mention that MongoDB stores date times as relative to the, UNOP, the, the UTC uh, epoch, and so we're just making these relative to January 1st, so they make more sense to us. Cool. Um, and we can see here that we just got uh, 48,000 trips on the New Year's. Um, or, sorry, 48,000 different pickup times on the New Year's. Uh, but when we were looking at this, it turns out that uh, our data look a little funny. Um, you can see down here that there are a bunch of weird times where uh, there aren't many values that were picked up. Um, and that's because, uh, we speculate that's because of the granularity of the reporting time of the different caps. Some of them might only report like, oh, accurate to this minute, some of them accurate to like five seconds or like one second. Um, and so it would be really nice to bin this data, uh, and we can do that because we're using NumPy. Um, so that's as simple as this. We specify the bin width, um, we truncate the arrays so there are multiples of this 300 bin width. So we'll be putting them into five minute values. Um, we can reshape it and then sum along the axis that we reshaped. And so what this will do is it'll take every 300 and collapse them together. And then for the pickup times, we'll just take every 300. Uh, and just sample like that. Um, and this is all NumPy, uh, so it's done already. And now we can plot our new cleaned up data, and we can look at the distribution of when people were picked up on New Year's. Uh, we can see that like that people were watching the ball drop, not many cab rides, uh, then the night got pretty late, everyone was going home, early in the morning, no one was taking a cab, and then daily activity resumed to normal. Um, and then finally, uh, one last feature that I'm going to demo is you can remove documents with Monary. Um, MongoDB has removed capability, but with Monary you can do bulk removes, and so this will give you more granularity over the exact data that you want to remove. So in this example, uh, again I'm going to run this while I go through. Um, in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to remove all of the data where uh, the fare was more than two standard deviations away from the mean, or where we don't know how they paid. Um, let's just say we want to remove outliers and unknown data. Uh, it's maybe something that's pretty common. Um, so we create a mask here that I call keep. Uh, so we're going to keep all of the fares that are greater than two standard deviations less than the mean. And out of those, we're only keeping the ones that are less than two standard deviations above the mean. Uh, we're throwing out everything that's masked or unknown payment type. Uh, and then we just do simply remove. Um, and we can see that we removed uh, almost 140,000 documents. 
Uh, and if we do another count, you can just see that this is now reflected in the database. Cool. Um, so that's the demo that we have. Uh, and if uh, that was really cool, you want to check out more about Monary, uh, we have a preliminary documentation site uh, located here um, where you can read the preliminary Monary docs. Once these are finalized, they'll be published to read the docs. Um, and now you can go pip install Monary. Uh, it's available on the PyPI. Um, again, this is a, a, the version before all of our latest features, um, so just be aware of that. Um, so, uh, really brief, the future of Monary. Um, so, as I said, we want to release all of the features that Kyle and I implemented this summer. Um, going forward, maybe integrating with Pandas. So this would allow Pandas um, native integration with MongoDB because we already have this fast library to go from MongoDB to NumPy. So it'd be cool to go from MongoDB to Pandas database. Um, bulk updates and upserts. Uh, so MongoDB allows you to modify data in the database. And it'd be cool if Monary could do this as well. So we're hoping that's in the future. Uh, array extraction. MongoDB can store arrays, uh, and currently Monary can't do much that's useful with them. Um, but hopefully, we can take uh, we can use sorry we can take advantage of NumPy's and dimensional arrays and take the arrays from MongoDB and put them into another dimension in NumPy. Uh, and then finally, integrating Monary with the Python standard logging module uh, to give more feedback to the users. Great. So if you want to contribute, again, it's authored by David Beach under the Apache license version 2.0. Um, it's open source on Bitbucket at this URL. Uh, all of these URLs are coming back in a bit. Um, so huge thanks to our summer mentors at MongoDB, A. Jesse, Jimmy Davis, and Jason Carey. Uh, Kyle and I both had a really great summer. We learned a lot, um, coded a lot of monary stuff, and it was awesome. Uh, huge thanks to David Beach. We sent him a ton of pull requests, a lot of huge changes, and he's been awesome about merging these and uh, getting back to us on everything. Um, thank you to Pi Gotham. Thank you to uh, all of you guys for attending this talk. Um, and uh, the source of Monary is available on Bitbucket. Uh, here's the PyPI link, um, the preliminary documentation link. And if you want to check out any of our demos, these slides, or any of our timing scripts, it's right here uh, at my GitHub slash PyGotham Monary. Um, and we would love to take questions if you have any. So you mentioned that you're using the Mongo C drive. Um, how much worse would things be if you tried to just use like Prime Mongo and NumPy? So using so those are were our uh, original tests. So you might want to go back to that slide. So using PyMongo uh, and NumPy, uh, you just you query you query the database, um, and then uh, you have you get a list of Python dicks back. Uh, from the, from that list of Python dicks, you extract what you want and then put them into the array. Uh, keep going back. We got about 150,000 document reads per second, so the throughput is okay. But if you really want to scale this more, uh, using Monary and using the C driver by bypassing the dict representation, it's about 10 times faster. So in order of magnitude. Yeah. How easy is it to append additional rows to your matrix once it's already stored in the model? So the question is, uh, how efficient is it to append to an array in MongoDB? Uh, if it's already written there. To a NumPy array, right. Oh, to a, num to a NumPy array? So you have a NumPy array that you've stored in Mongo, then I decide to add another, add more, merge two arrays, and get two arrays. So I, you have to pull it back out of Mongo, or how does that work? So if I had an array in Mongo and I search it there for more, then I'm going to append additional rows or append an additional array on top of that. How would that work? Do I have to extract it out? So the way it works uh, in MongoDB is if you have an array, uh, it typically has some padding added to the end. So the first few appends tend to be for free. But I'm assuming that the array you're appending is something non trivial, so that will incur. Uh, an extra write. Uh, you might want to. Do, I, we, I have not tested this, so I'm not sure whether it's faster on the server or on your, or uh, locally on your host. Uh, you might want to try appending it once and then doing the insert, but I haven't done any so I, I can't tell. We have maybe time for one last question. We have like less than a minute. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.